everyone, welcome to another ranking video. Today I'll be doing a ranking for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, this isn't the first time I've done it. Um, I did a ranking for it back uh, two years ago, right? Um, I think Civil War was the newest movie at the time, um, and it was before Doctor Strange came out, right? So that was a total of 13 movies. Now it's 2018, and there is a total of 20 movies. Um, I know a lot of you guys have been wanting to see me uh, do this again because obviously there's been a lot more movies coming out um, And also to see if any of my opinions changed on certain films I know a lot of people kind of disagreed with some of my choices particularly like uh, what I said about Iron Man 3 um, Which uh, we'll see if my views on that have changed um, But yeah now there's 20 movies like I said uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp is number 20 and I purposely wanted to wait until Infinity War came out uh, before I did this ranking again because, you know, it's a big movie and, you know, I wanted to see how that was uh, compared to everything else. Um, and I wanted to wait for it to come out on Blu-ray so I could rewatch it a million times. Uh, and yes, I have a solid opinion on it now. Um, and also Ant-Man and the Wasp obviously isn't out on Blu-ray yet. I only have 19 movies here. But I will try to include it in this ranking even though I've only seen the movie once. And that was like almost two months ago. Um, but I'm pretty sure I know where I have it ranked. Um, so yeah, it's kind of not really a fair ranking for that movie per se. But the other 19 here, for sure, this is how I want ha uh, have them ranked. So this would be from worst to best right here. So I'm going to go through them one by one and show you how I feel about them. Um, the movies I've talked about already, like I said, the first 13 um, in the first video, um, I won't, you know, try to drag on you know the same information again so i'll kind of keep it brief with those movies but the newer movies the newest seven movies starting with dr strange um i will talk a little bit more about them obviously because you know i didn't get a chance to talk about them in the first video um so yeah um i guess i can just start right now and like i said ant-man and the wasp i've only seen it once so this is kind of just me guessing where it would be in this uh list so yeah um here we go Okay, so number 20, no surprise, is Iron Man 2. This was my bottom choice the first time. Um, oh, and by the way, um, I didn't go back and look at my ranking, uh, my original ranking. I did this ranking totally blind, like I just decided how I felt about them. And then I went back and looked at my ranking. And I gotta say, some of the movies um, are still in the same place. Some have gone up and some have gone down. But it's uh, about the same still. Um, but some have changed though, and I'll get into that. But anyways, Iron Man 2 is still the worst, in my opinion. Um, this movie's a mess. Everybody knows that. Uh, <laughs> just, yeah, Marvel was getting a little too uh, crazy. Um, you know, when they realized they were starting a universe, this is only the third movie in the series, but they treated it like, you know, it was Avengers. You know, this is basically like pre-Avengers. Like, they're really setting up that stuff uh, a lot in this movie and it wasn't really an Iron Man movie and John Favreau didn't get to do what he wanted and they screwed Mickey Rourke over and all this stuff and Sam Rockwell fantastic actor was completely wasted in this uh yeah just uh, everybody knows Iron Man 2 is a mess but anyways I talked about that in detail the first time so let's move on all right coming in at 19th now this movie went down um Thor the Dark World now you know I did go on about oh i love loki in this movie you know tom hiddleston does a fantastic performance in this but that literally is the only good part about this movie like i mean it's shot well the special effects look great but you know the rest of the movie is just kind of dull um yeah i really thought about it i was like you know what thor the dark world isn't that good uh <laughs> and i also came to find out that a lot of people hate this movie um and Put it at the last place um but i still think iron man 2 deserves the last place no matter what um i don't think they're ever gonna do a movie that bad again so but door of the dark world you know it's decent um i don't hate it i don't hate any of these movies you know even iron man 2 i don't hate it but i say iron man 2 is the only bad one like legit bad this i wouldn't call legit bad i would just call it kind of you know just very very underwhelming um, but yeah, Thor of the Dark World, talked about it last time, uh, great Tom Hiddleston stuff in here, um, but yeah, nothing, nothing much else in this movie, so, Thor of the Dark World is number 19. Okay, number 18, Incredible Hulk, now, this movie also is very, like, not underwhelming, just, you know, it's not really one you want to watch, 
um, that often, but I've seen it a billion times back in 2008 when I first bought the DVD for this. I watched it so many times just because, you know, there's only Iron Man in this uh, at the time for the MCU. Um, but yeah, this movie, I enjoy, I enjoy a lot of the stuff in Mexico where, uh, you know, oh, is it Mexico or is it Brazil? Oh no, I think it's Brazil actually, my bad, where uh, Bruce Banner's hiding out. A lot of that stuff is great. The chase sequences are great. Um, Tim Roth is a great villain, I think. William Hurt also. Um, but this movie's just kind of like, it's very average, it's very mediocre. Um, and a lot of people don't like this one also. Mainly because Edward Norton never came back to play Hulk again. Which is fine because, you know, I do like Mark Ruffalo more. But Edward Norton, I'm, I'm a big fan of his. I think he did a good job in this. But, um, yeah, this movie's not really one you want to watch all that often. But I do, like, have a soft spot for it, kind of. A little bit of nostalgia for it, like I said. Because... Back when it first came out, I watched it like a bazillion times. And uh, yeah, I do like this more than most people, that's for sure. But it's still one of the weaker movies, definitely. Also, the fact that Universal owns the rights to this one and, you know, they can't make another Hulk sequel, which is weird. And they have to incorporate them into, you know, the Thor series. And it's just, it's kind of a mess, um, the whole Hulk situation. Because if you notice, Marvel, they always have like a sequel or a trilogy for each of their movies, like Captain America, Thor, Iron Man, Guardians is going to get a third movie, um, Spider-Man's going to have three movies probably, you know what I mean? So it's like each franchise gets at least three movies, whereas this one never got a sequel. It's mainly because of Universal, and also because of Edward Norton leaving. It would be kind of weird to have the sequel to this, you know, have a straight-up different actor, even though technically the other movies are sequels to this, but you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of, this movie's the most out of place by far. But, uh, yeah, it's not horrible, but it's number 18. Okay, number 17 is going to be the first Thor. Now, um, I think I have this a little lower than I originally had it. But, um, yeah, I, I, I did say the first time that I love the small town feel of this movie. I don't know what it is, but, like, the New Mexico scene, or not scene, but scenes, the you know, the setting. I kind of like that small town feel of the movie. I don't know what it is. I just think it's cool you know, juxtaposed with the Asgardian giant world and, you know, um, and there's a lot of great stuff with Loki in this also. And, you know, some people don't like the Natalie Portman and, you know, Kat Dennings characters and whatever. But, uh, you know, I thought this was a, a decent movie. Um, Kenneth Branagh, you know, directed this, which is, you know, it's kind of funny that they got him to do this because he directs these epic, you know, like, epic movies uh, that have to do with like um sh like i guess you could say shakespearean sort of figures and he did a thor movie but i don't know um yeah i don't know i just uh, this is a decent movie but it's definitely one of the weaker ones i don't really go back to watch this one that much but uh yeah the first thor um, kind of low but I, I don't know i just <laughs> i don't know it's just kind of uh compared to the newer movies that came out it, it just had to go down on the list i guess um, but anyways, next up is Captain America the First Avenger. Now, this one actually went up a few places um, because I recently rewatched this. I don't know why. I just felt like watching it. And I got to admit, I actually enjoy it a lot more now. Um, the first time I did this ranking, I said this movie didn't feel like a movie. It felt like, oh, let's just introduce Captain America. Okay, let's go on to the Avengers. You know what I mean? It didn't feel like a movie movie, if that makes any sense. Like, it just felt like a quick, oh, here's Captain America, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Um... But no, I kind of take that back because I rewatched this and there's a lot of emotion in this. There's a lot of great drama. There's a lot of great character development. Um, him and Peggy have a great, uh, you know, relationship in this. Um, or should I say just character relationship? You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I just, uh, I, I enjoyed this a little more. Um, this was a, I had a fun time rewatching this actually. Um, it was a little, little fun movie you can watch. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of take back what I said about this. I don't think it's, uh as bad as I uh, originally said. I didn't. I don't think I called it bad or anything. I just didn't say I liked it, I guess. But uh, I do like it now a lot more, so I put this up a little higher. Um, so yeah, that's the first Captain America. All right, coming up next is Avengers Age of Ultron. Now, I'm pretty sure this went down on the list. Um, now, when I first saw this movie, I loved it. I thought it was better than the first Avengers, blah, blah, blah. I know that's crazy um to say especially nowadays because everyone knows this movie is not that great and yes the more i watch this movie every time i rewatch it the less i like it um now i still love ultron as a character 
of course, everybody jokes. The Age of Ultron was only like four days. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was. Um, but this also had the Iron Man 2 problem, which I did talk about in the first ranking, where there was studio interference. Joss Whedon didn't get to make the movie he wanted, uh, per se. They, you know, threw in all this stuff about the Infinity Stones and blah, blah, blah. Um, and Ultron didn't, get really, didn't really get a chance to shine. But his character was great. James Spader did a great job. But, uh, yeah. This movie was kind of a mess, and I don't know, each time I watch it, I like it less and less. So yeah, Age of Ultron, not horrible or anything, I still like it a lot, more than most people. But um, yeah, just I, I do see its flaws now, um, I've been enlightened. So yeah, uh, Age of Ultron is coming in at, um, I don't even know what number that is, hold on, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. Okay, that was 15th place. Alright, coming in at 14th place is Doctor Strange. Now, um, this one I didn't talk about last time because it's new. Um, this one I kind of have low, but um, that's not because the movie's bad or anything. It's a really solid introduction to the character. Um, but it's not really one that I go back to watch that often. That's why I kind of have it low. But uh, Benedict Cumberbatch did a great job in this. They did a great job explaining all the magic stuff and, you know, the uh, mystic arts, I guess you could call it. And, um, you know... Just his whole character origin and, you know, him ruining his hands and blah, blah, blah. Um, just a great, I guess, character piece, I guess you could say, for, uh, you know, Stephen Strange. And the rest of the movie is pretty decent. Um, it's nothing spectacular, though. Like, uh, the special effects are great, but uh, the rest of the movie is just kind of average, I guess. But that's not a bad thing, um, per se. It's just, you know, it's just a very solid movie, but there's not much going for it, I guess. Um... Not really rewatchable. I mean, it is rewatchable, but it's not like one you want to just always go back to. You have to be in a certain mood to watch this, I guess, if that's the right way to say it. Um, but yeah, Doctor Strange, I have it very low, but, you know, I mean, it's not super, super low, but, you know, uh, yeah, I feel like this is probably a good spot for it as compared to the other ones. So, Doctor Strange is number 14, right? Yeah. Okay, coming in at number 13 is the first Ant-Man movie. Now, this movie, I do enjoy this one quite a lot. Um, I think it's very funny. Paul Rudd is great in it. Um, it's a great introduction to the character, and it does a great job explaining the whole shrinking and all that stuff. Um, and it's got a lot of great dynamics with, um, you know, the heist or whatever you want to call it at the end of the movie. Um, with all the shrinking and whatnot, and all the insects. And, you know, Yellow Jacket is probably the worst part of this movie. He's kind of a very generic villain. Um, this movie is very much like the first Iron Man, sort of, in terms of, like, the villain and whatnot. Um, but, uh, yeah, this, this was a solid movie, I thought, though. Um, like I said, really funny. Um, I don't know, just don't have much else to say. Um, I do like it a lot, but, you know, the villain is kind of weak. That's probably the worst part about it. Um, so, yeah, the first Ant-Man right there is number th uh, 13, right? Okay, so coming into number 12 is actually going to be Ant-Man and the Wasp. Now, I'm not doing that on purpose because I just talked about the first Ant-Man. Um, I have it at number 12 because I did say in my review I liked it more than the first Ant-Man, right? And I still kind of uh, agree with that, I guess, um, thinking back to the movie um, as much as I can. And my next movie on the list is Spider-Man Homecoming. So I'm like, okay, I like Ant-Man and the Wasp more than Ant-Man, but I don't like it more than this movie. So that's why I have it at number 12. So I'm pretty sure that's where it would be, um, even after I rewatch it a bunch of times when it comes out on Blu-ray. But uh, yeah, Ant-Man and the Wasp, I have a full movie review for it if you want to check it out. That I did right after I saw the movie, so you get my, you know, my uh, my unprocessed, I guess, uh, opinions on it. Like, I didn't get a chance to process the movie, but, you know, it was right after I saw it. So you get all my true reactions, I guess you could say. Um, so if you want to know all my opinions on Ant-Man and the Wasp, go check out my review I did. Um, but yeah, it was a fun movie. I liked mainly all the dynamics with the shrinking and the growing. And, you know, there's a lot of good drama in it. The villain was decent. Um, Evangeline Lilly was a great, you know, superhero in that um, as the Wasp. And yeah, it was a very solid movie. Not as bad as everybody says, though. I know I might kind of have it high on my list. Um as compared to what other people would say, because a lot of people didn't like the movie. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. So, yeah, Ant Man and the Wasp is number 12. Okay, so number 11, um, right? So there's 3, 6, 9, 10, yeah. So this would be 11. Uh, Spider Man Homecoming. 
Um, really enjoyed this movie. Tom Holland is definitely my favorite Spider-Man um, out of the three we've had. Uh, just a really fun movie. I mean, <laughs> I can watch this anytime, really. Um, I'm actually watching it on my TV right now, but it's on pause while I'm recording this. Um, I just felt like watching it. But, uh, yeah, great villain and Michael Keaton as the Vulture. Um, you know, it's a great high school movie also. I, I kind of wish this came out when I was still in high school. I would, I probably would have appreciated more. Um, you know, you got Iron Man in there. He's not in the movie much, but when he is, it's really cool. Um, but, yeah, just a really great movie. I don't really have anything bad to say about it. Um, just really awesome. So, yeah, Spider-Man Homecoming is number 11. All right, so number 10, I really was having a tough time deciding, okay, do I like this or Spider-Man Homecoming more? And I went with Thor Ragnarok because Thor Ragnarok is probably one of the most fun movies I've ever seen, like, period. It's just a fun movie. Um, there is a little bit of, you know, sadness in it with a certain scene with, uh, uh, I mean, I'm sure everybody saw this movie by now, but the scene with Odin, that's all I'm going to say. That's the, probably the only sad part in the movie, really. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, but this movie is super fun. You know, Taika Waititi, I believe that's how you say his name. You know, he played Kord in this, great character. But, uh, he's a very great, uh, director. Um, I've only seen this movie from him, but from what I hear, he's a great director. Um, and this was a, like I said, super fun movie. Had that Guardians of the Galaxy kind of feel to it. All the stuff on Sakaar was great. Hello was, you know, kind of a wasted villain. A lot of people don't like her character, but, you know, she... She was uh, decent, I guess. She was over the top, and I think that was the point. And Kate Blanchett, from what I can tell, had a fun time making this. It looked like everybody had a fun time making this. Like, when you watch the movie, you see people, like the actors, it looks like they're having fun. And that also, you know, that also helps make a movie seem more fun. Um, I really enjoy that aspect of it. Um, when the actors, when you tell, when you can tell the actors are having fun, that makes you have more fun with the movie. So yeah, Thor Ragnarok, fun movie. I love it to death. Um, I'm pretty sure it's always going to be in the top 10 no matter what. Um, you know, when more movies come out, I I'm pretty sure I'm always going to have this in the top 10. Um, but we'll have to see what happens with the MCU. But uh, yeah, Thor Ragnarok, love that movie. Um, really redeemed the Thor character, absolutely. Alright, so coming into number 9 is Guardians Volume 1. Again, fun movie. Um, you know, I would say I think Thor Ragnarok is a little more fun than this actually. Because this has a lot of, you know, uh, the stuff with Ronan especially is very, like, uh, dark and bleak. And that, that's kind of the point, though. It's kind of meant to be like, oh, Ronan's this over-the-top, you know, serious villain. And then you have the Guardians of the Galaxy doing a dance-off with him or whatever, which is really funny. Um, you know, I get that. But uh, I, I do think this is a better movie, though, overall than Thor Ragnarok. It has a better, you know, has better emotion in it. It's better... It's got a better soundtrack, you know, the awesome mix or whatever. Um, it's got a great ensemble cast. Um, but yeah, I think Guardians works better as a movie as opposed to Thor Ragnarok, which is kind of, you know, Thor Ragnarok's got a lot of things going on in it with Asgard and Sakaar and, you know, a bunch of other things. But this one is just a very solid, great introduction movie um, and made the Guardians of the Galaxy a very mainstream thing, whereas, you know, beforehand, it was, like, kind of an unknown comic, um, so this was a risk on Marvel's part to make this, um, but yeah, you know, you got Groot in there, and, you know, beautiful scene with, you know, We Are Groot, you know, everybody knows this movie's great, so Guardians Volume 1, I guess you can call it Volume 1 now, is number 9. Okay, so coming in at number 8 is gonna be the first Avengers. Now, probably people would have this higher, um, the way I've always felt about the first Avengers movie, I've, I've always really liked it, but I've never, like, super loved it. I know a lot of people, like, really love this movie, but for me, I just, I've never, like, really loved it that much. Um, I think it's great, um, definitely, and they did a great job balancing all the characters and whatnot, but, um, you know, Joss Whedon did a great job with this. But I've, I don't know, I just never seen it as like this superhero movie masterpiece, like most people are probably <laughs> referring to it. Uh, so yeah, the first Avengers, great movie, but I just don't like, I'm not like really in love with it. Like, I don't know. Um, am I alone on that one? Um, but yeah, just a great movie though. Um, there's some parts of this movie that are kind of cheesy now, nowadays. I don't know why. Uh, this movie, you know, some, there were movies before this that have actually aged better than this. Like, the first Iron Man has aged very well. 
I would say. Um, the first Captain America probably has aged well. But this one, I don't know. There's some parts in this movie that haven't aged well. Like certain things with uh, Loki and, I don't know, this opening scene with a Tesseract is kind of weird. And, I don't know, there's some weird stuff in this movie that hasn't aged well. I, I, that's what I'm just trying to say. Um, I don't know. Just, yeah. I'm not trying to rant or anything, but the first Avengers, very good movie, though. So, yeah. That is number eight. All right, so coming in at number seven, one of the newer ones, is Black Panther. I love this movie, um, especially since it came out on Blu-ray. I've rewatched it a bunch of times, and it's still grip. It's still really good. Michael B. Jordan, probably, well, aside from Thanos, the best villain MCU's ever had. I mean, Jesus. Um, all the emotion with his character and, you know, um, and his final scene, very, oh my God, so good. And all the stuff with Wakanda and... You know, there's a great soundtrack, and some of the special effects, though, again, you know, everyone likes to point out there's some bad special effects in this, which is true, um, but no, not the whole movie, just certain scenes. Um, Andy Serkis, great in this. Um, you know, he was in Age of Ultron, but uh, in this one, he's way over the top, and I love it. So, yeah, um, just Black Panther, just awesome movie. Everybody knows. Black Panther's amazing. Uh, Ryan Coogler did a great job with this. Um I don't really have much else to say. I, uh, like I said, I have a full review of this on my channel if you want to check it out. Um, but yeah, fantastic movie. Love it, love it, love it. Black Panther. All right, now coming in at number six, this is also kind of a nostalgia thing. The first Iron Man. I think this actually might be higher than what I had it before. I have to check. But um, I'm always going to love the first Iron Man. I know a lot of people don't like Jeff Bridges, you know, villain character. Um, but his motivations are there. Um, and yes, I will acknowledge that his, you know, uh, Iron Monger stuff at the end is kind of over the top and cheesy. Uh, <laughs> but this is a very, very great introduction to the character. I mean, it, it started the whole franchise. So, you know, um, you gotta give it that. Um, Robert Downey Jr., fantastic in this movie. Um, just, yeah, I love the first Iron Man movie. Like, it's, I wouldn't call it a classic or anything like that, but it's, it's one of the most uh, memorable Marvel movies for sure. Um, it's it's very essential to the whole franchise. Um, all the stuff in the cave, building the Mark One suit, and all that, and you know all the stuff with Pepper. Just a very great movie. Um, I would think I like this more than most people. Um, but uh, yeah, the first Iron Man, great movie. Um, don't have much else to say. Yeah, Iron Man. Okay, so coming in at number uh, what is this five? Coming in at number five. Guardians Volume 2. Now, this is probably where things are going to get a little controversial. Because uh, I, I notice people, they like this movie, but they don't like it as much as I do. People will probably say, oh no, Guardians 1 is better. This should be in the bottom bottom 10, bottom 5, whatever. Um, like, they know this is a good movie and all, but they don't like, they're not in love with it. Mainly because this is like a personal like movie. Sort of like Iron Man 3, which, notice, I haven't talked about yet. Uh... <laughs> But Guardians Volume 2, um, like I said, this is a personal movie, you can tell, James Gunn, which I won't get into the whole controversy with him, but uh, he did a great job with this story. Um, it's very much a personal story for Star-Lord and his dad, and it's not really like a, a cinematic universe movie, you know? That's that's kind of the point, uh, what I was trying to make. Uh, people probably don't like that aspect of it. Um, but yeah, this movie is, uh, it's very good, it's very fun, it's got a fantastic soundtrack. Um, but yeah, it's just very emotional. All the stuff with Yondu, you know what I'm talking about if you've seen the movie. Just beautiful ending, um, a lot of the stuff in this movie is beautiful, great visuals. Ego is a great villain, Kurt Russell did a great job. Um, you know, and the Guardians are, you know, they're very, they're very much having their differences in this movie. Um, great character development for them. But, uh, yeah, I have a full review of this also if you want to check that out. But, uh, yeah, I like this more than the first Guardians. I think it's a better movie overall. But I will admit the first Guardians is probably more fun than this one. Um, but, yeah, this is a better movie in my opinion. So, Guardians Volume 2. All right. Coming in at number four is The Winter Soldier. Now, everybody knows this movie is fantastic. The first movie that the Russo brothers did for Marvel... Um, and this also is like, uh, like a spy espionage sort of 1970s thriller movie. Um, not thriller, but spy espionage action movie. Um, 
this was a big risk on Marvel's part to do a movie like this, uh, like a political thriller. There you go. That's what I meant to say. Not thriller, but political thriller. Um, everybody knows Winter Soldier is amazing. Uh, you know, Winter Soldier the, is the main villain of this, of course, and he is a great character in this. Very intimidating. Um, Chris Evans did a fantastic job playing Captain America in this. Um, but yeah, this one is very, like, I remember the first time I watched this movie, I was just really, like, scared. Not scared, but, like, worried about, like, what was going to happen. It's very, like, it's very suspenseful, because, like, you, you don't know who to trust. It's like, don't trust anyone, and you think, you know, there's a certain scene with Nick Fury. It looks like he's getting, he, he looks like he gets killed, but, you know, obviously he's still alive. Um, spoilers, I guess. Well, actually, <laughs> it, I said still alive. Uh, never mind. Um... <laughs> So, yeah, everybody knows Wonder Soldier's amazing. Um, I would put it higher, because, you know, I do think this is an excellent movie. But um, the only, like, complaint, I guess, I would have with this is it's kind of like Doctor Strange. You have to be in the right mood to watch this one. Um, so I'm not always in the mood to watch this one. But uh, when I am, it's fantastic. So, you know, it's just one you can't really always go back to no matter what. But when you do, it's amazing. So, yeah, Wonder Soldier is number four. All right, so coming in... At number three is Iron Man 3. Again, people are probably like, what are you thinking? Um, again, I, I don't know why people haven't figured it out. This movie is fantastic. Um, I get it. People don't like the Mandarin thing. Um, just look past it, okay? Just look past the Mandarin thing. And this is a great character piece on Tony Stark. And again, people always are like, oh, he's barely Iron Man in the movie. Well, you know what? That was the point. You missed the point. This is supposed to show you about... This movie is supposed to show you what Tony Stark is all about. Not Iron Man. It's supposed to be about Tony Stark. Um, I, I could go on and on about this movie. Like, just watch my first video on this and uh, hear what I have to say. But uh, this movie is amazing. I mean, Jesus Christ. Give it another chance and notice the depth. And notice the character building. And notice the conflict between him and uh, Aldrich Killian. The conflict between him and himself. The conflict between him dealing with his, you know, his PTSD and whatnot and his anxiety. Um, just, yeah, this is a fantastic movie. I mean, Shane Black made this. That's all I have to say. He's a great director and writer. Um, go watch The Nice Guys. Great movie. Uh, the best Iron Man yet. Absolutely. Um, and I get why people didn't like it originally when it first came out. I get it. You know, you know when it first came out, people didn't like mandarin twist and again he wasn't iron man much in the movie and i will admit the first time i watched this movie i didn't like it but like i said if you give it another chance you'll notice how fantastic it really is um and i have seen reviewers that do know this is great but i've also seen more reviewers say it isn't so i wish people would realize how good this is again i know it's all opinion but trust me this is not as bad as everybody says um for sure so yeah iron man 3 very good movie. I don't care what you say. All right. <laughs> number two is Civil War. Now, you obviously know what my number one is now, which I will get into. Um, but yeah, number two is Civil War. In my first video, this was number one. But of course, since the other movie came out, um, it is now number two. Now, I still think this is a fantastic movie. Um, you know, all the stuff at the airport, airport fight sequence is great. Um, all the drama between Iron Man, Winter Soldier, and Captain America at the end is fantastic. When Tony finds out a certain thing, that was so shocking to me when I first saw it in theaters. I was like, oh my god. And I really thought one of them was going to die for sure, but, you know, they didn't. I wish, I really wish they would have took that route, but it's whatever. Um, this movie would have definitely had more of an impact if somebody did die at the end. But, uh, you know, it's okay. It definitely left its impact for the rest of the franchise in terms of like splitting up the Avengers and whatnot um but yeah just a fantastic uh ensemble cast and you know the fact that they were able to balance so many characters in this and they did an even better job in the next movie which I'm going to talk about um but yeah the Russo Brothers this is a great movie I, I really love this movie um they introduced Black Panther very well Spider-Man very well uh yeah this movie is definitely going to have a legacy um so, yeah, Captain America Civil War. Love this movie. All right, so that's number two. Now, number one, of course, is Infinity War. Um, this movie is amazing. 
Now, if you go back and watch my initial review, which is like, I think it's like 40 minutes or something like that, when I first saw the movie, um, I was like, my main complaint was how there are certain tonal issues with the movie, like there'll be an emotional scene, and then there's going to be something funny afterwards, you know, because they have to balance so many different stories and so many different characters and whatnot. Um, but re-watching this movie so many times, that is not a problem anymore. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't know why initially I thought that, but there really isn't a tonal problem. It's just how the movie flows. Um, and Thanos, oh my god, fantastic villain, of course. Josh Brolin does an amazing performance in this. Uh, you know, uh, all the stuff with him and getting the stones and certain sacrifices he has to make. And everybody knows this movie is, like, uh, amazing. I mean, Jesus, I rewatched this movie so many times ever since... The uh, Blu-ray came out, and uh, yeah, oh my god, this is definitely number one. I mean, Jesus, so good. This movie, oh my god, <laughs> I love this movie. I can't wait to see Avengers 4, because supposedly it's even better and, and even more emotional and whatnot. So, yeah, Avengers Infinity War, fantastic. It's my number one, um, and I'm sure certain people probably agree with that. But uh, yeah, just, I don't know, just go watch my whole review for it. And I did give it like a 9 out of 10, I think, um, when I first reviewed it. I'm not sure, but I'm going to stick to that rating. I, I would still give this a 9 out of 10. And uh, yeah, I take back what I said about the tonal issues. There really aren't any after re after rewatching this so many times. Um, it's not a problem. It's just probably because, you know, my expectations were so high when I first went to see this. I think that's why. Um, I think that's why I judged it that way. But um yeah, I don't feel that way anymore about it. I think it's it's just fine. So anyways, Infinity War is number one. So anyways, that was my whole ranking. Uh, 32 minutes, Jesus. Let me know what you guys think of my ranking. Do you agree or disagree with anything I said? Um, especially with Iron Man 3. I know that's probably the most controversial. Um, and also probably Volume 2, Guardians. Um, but yeah, let me know your guys' ranking in the comments of all 20 movies. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching this, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.